Welcome back, Dr. Craig Kaplan. Angelo, terrific to be back with you again and talking about my favorite subject, which is AI. How has AI changed since you began working in the field? There was symbolic AI where you program it and tell it exactly what to do. And then there was machine learning where it learns. The problem with machine learning is it's not exactly clear what the machine has learned and how it's going to behave. But I think there's a way to bring both of these approaches together, which is kind of where the field's going now. One of the major challenges is we have to get greater transparency and we have to increase the reliability and trustworthiness of these systems. We're going to need more symbolic reasoning and more planning, the kinds of things that humans do. There has been a lot of tweets and media coverage about the dangers. Where do you stand? If you ask me for my odds, I'd say, you know, it's 80 to 90% that it's all going to be great. And this is going to be the best thing that's ever happened to humankind. And But there is this 10 to 20% chance that it could be really bad to the point of actually even wiping everyone out. What we need to do is design it to be safe. Let's not try to argue about whether we should or shouldn't do it. It's going to happen. So let's make it as safe as it can be. What can we do? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's 10,000 times more cost effective to design the code right in the design phase than to try to fix it after you ship. What we need to do is figure out a better architecture, a better way of creating the systems that is not so black boxy. There's ways to get human values into lots of agents in a democratic way so that they serve um, just like in our democracy as checks and balances on each other. And to me, that will be a much safer approach. We're beginning to hear about artificial general intelligence, AGI. What is AGI? And the basic idea is that we can kind of get this very high level of intelligence across any cognitive task. And I believe that the architecture or the way to design that is to take AI agents, which more and more people are now realizing, and create a way for them to interact, collective intelligence. If you design that properly, you will not only be able to have rules where you understand how the system works, which would make it safer, but you will also have a much more powerful system than any one of those agents by itself. Can you explain what super intelligence is? Super intelligent AI can do everything a human can, but like a thousand times better or 10,000 times better. We're talking about something that is autonomous and is a million times smarter, Angelo, than you or I. I think in the long, long term, humans have unique value um, in providing values that guide these systems because there is no rational way to derive values. We don't necessarily need to know how every little bit of these very advanced AI systems are going to operate. Um, if we know that they have our best interests at heart and they're aligned with human values, then that's going to be good. What can you tell us about your approach and how does it differ from others in terms of what you're doing? Imagine a network of millions of AI agents and millions of humans, and you put a question into that network and it can give you a super intelligent response out. Anything that the AIs are not able to do in the beginning, the humans can fill in, the AIs can learn from the humans, and the next time that question comes, now the AIs learned how to do it. This approach not only scales, but very, very importantly, it's safe because you can understand how the system works at that entity level. And Craig, which technology companies are best positioned to develop super intelligence according to the approach that you outlined? I really like what Meta and IBM are doing, and there's, I think, 80 other partners. I'm hopeful that this will be the path that almost everybody ends up going down, where you have open... Uh, models. So you have access to the AIs, not in the hands of a very few people, but sort of put out their open source code and many, many millions of developers and millions of millions of users can customize these agents. So who's got a lot of data? Meta has a ton of data. Google has a ton of data. If there was a way to sort of tap the elite experts in different fields, and get their knowledge to train the eye, well, that intelligence will go to the next level. Are you open to working with these large technology companies? Absolutely. My mission here is let's implement the safest approach during this win limited window that humanity has as quickly as possible, and it will be impossible not to make money at the same time. The current time frame for super intelligence, people are sort of saying two, three years at the earliest we could maybe get there. Um, and 
probably most researchers would say it would take longer to really have it. And I'm saying I got the designs now. If people want to learn about AI safety, AGI, and kind of your company's designs for safe, super intelligence, where can they go? So you can go to IQ Company's website, which is iqco.com. It's going to be an exciting new world. Angela, this has been really a wonderful, wonderful interview and great to see you again. So thank you for having me on. Pleasure. Thank you.